A study issued by the Health Ministry has stated that two-thirds of the country's population have developed antibodies against the virus. Experts, however, are apprehensive that the antibody was developed due to vaccination or after getting infected, while it is still unclear how long the antibodies were. Experts also suggest that a study reveals the virus has spread all over the country and therefore the safest bet at the moment will be to maintain maximum precautions. Good morning, I am Bivarshna Tamang and these are the headlines of the hour. Internal party disputes in the ruling alliance delays cabinet expansion. Sources say delay caused by disputes in distribution of portfolios. The Health Ministry's recent study suggests the COVID-19 vaccination drive has been effective. Up to two-thirds population developed antibodies, experts apprehensive. Hurricane Ida makes landfall in the U.S. state of Louisiana, bringing 150 mile per hour winds and cutting power to more than half a million people. And Lionel Messi debut for PSG in the French Ligue 1, featuring in a 2-0 victory over Reims. Mbappe probably playing his last match, scores both the goals for PSG. The continuous downpour for the past four days has affected the general life in majority parts of the country. Many houses have been damaged by floods and landslides, while more than a dozen highways have remained disrupted. Landslides in Palpa's Dumri Siddhababa, Paitidada, Charana, among other places, have disrupted vehicle movement on the Siddhartha Highway today as well while two houses have been buried and four houses are at risk. Likewise, ten houses were damaged in Butwal due to landslide debris that fell from the Churi and people there have been shifted to safer grounds. Meanwhile, vehicle movement on the Midhill Highway in Sindhuli has been disrupted for the past five days due to landslides. Meanwhile, the landslide in Golchi Thading has disrupted vehicle movement on the Prithvi Highway since early yesterday evening while vehicular traffic on the Thrivuvan Highway has also been halted due to a landslide near Nagdunga. Prime Minister Sherbahadur Dioba has not been able to give full shape to his cabinet even after assuming office over a month and a half ago. Internal disputes within parties of the ruling alliance and a number of individuals looking for ministerial berths, as experts say, are the main reasons for the delay in cabinet expansion. We have more in this report. Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deoba, CPN Mavis Centre Chairman Pushpa Kamal Dahal and CPN Unified Socialist Chairman Madhav Kumar Nepal held a meeting on Sunday morning at the Prime Minister's official residence in Balwatar that dwelt over the possible cabinet expansion. However, leaders failed to reach any conclusion over the distribution of portfolios even as they have been claiming of giving full shape to the cabinet after the breakaway factions of CPN-UML and Janata Samajwadi Party received official status. Parties of the ruling alliance have been dwelling on the issue as they have to distribute 25 portfolios among at least four parties at a time when there are many aspirants looking to join the government. CPN Unified Socialist Chairman Madhav Kumar Nepal himself admitted that internal issues have delayed expanding the cabinet. Most of the portfolios are still without ministers. Experts doubt that the government is waiting to withdraw the ordinance related to the Political Parties Act as leaders have suspected of further party split in the wake of dissatisfaction over the cabinet expansion. The ruling Nepali Congress, however, has been claiming of cabinet expansion without any further delay, citing internal discussions have been ongoing. The incumbent government is in comfort majority following the division of CPN UML and Janata Samajwadi Party. However, the delay in cabinet expansion has increased dissatisfaction among the public at a time when the country is reeling under the COVID-19 pandemic. Welcome back. The country continues to reel under coronavirus as 24 individuals succumbed to the virus yesterday while 1,214 more individuals tested positive. 
According to the Health Ministry, out of the 7,259 samples tested through the PCR method, 1,214 were positive. The ministry informed that Kathmandu district registered 312 new cases yesterday, while Morang, Kaski and Laritpur were among the districts that reported over 100 cases. On a brighter note, 2,260 individuals recovered from coronavirus. There are 35,796 active cases in the country at the moment, out of which 625 COVID patients are currently being treated in intensive care units or various hospitals, while 167 COVID patients are on ventilator support. The recent study carried out by the Health Ministry has suggested that the COVID-19 vaccination drive has been effective. In a survey con conducted by the Ministry, individuals who had received their first dose of the vaccine have created antibody up to 80%, while those who received the second jab have created up to 90%. Nepal has been rolling out vaccines of Ferrocell, Johnson & Johnson, AstraZeneca and Covishield. According to the Health Ministry, more than 5 million individuals have received the first dose and more than 4 million individuals have received their full dose so far. The Ministry collected samples from all these seven provinces and conducted a research for over a month to prepare a detailed study. The Ministry informed that out of the 13,161 samples collected, 68.6% had antibody. In our Public Voice segment, we had asked the local residents in Rupandehi, Noel Parasi and Palpa how effective has the rescue operation been for the flood and landslide victims. Let's take a look at what they had to say. Public Voice <laughs> it's time now for our segment public pulse where text us with your opinion Public polls. And here's the question What's your take on party and its leaders talking of good governance while in opposition and focusing on facilities after acquiring power? Your options are option A devaluating public mandate, option B exploiting state resources, and option C result of desire. The voting is on type NAWS, select your option A, B, or C and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. It's time now for our special segment of the beat. Hotel and tourism business that was operational in Parvat district at an investment of around 1 billion rupees has been hit hard by the ongoing pandemic. The number of employees has been slashed while the staff are only receiving half of their salary amount amid the financial crisis triggered by the prolonged corona crisis. The world's second highest bungee jumping, as claimed, located at Parvat, that lies at a distance of around 250 kilometers from the capital Kathmandu, used to see a throng of around 600 visitors on a single day before the pandemic had hit the global world. The number in recent time has drastically gone down as just a handful of domestic turn up now and again for this daring adventure. The jump master employed at the center, Prakash Pradhan, who was recruited for 200,000 monthly salaries, has only received 30,000 per month for the past six months. The center had recruited 70 employees before the pandemic, while the number is now limited to only 23. Parbat also boasts of sophisticated eight hotels and 350 restaurants. These sophisticated hotels could accommodate 50 to 100 guests at a time. The operators informed that there were some 500 staff working at the hotels before the pandemic, while these hotels have only recruited 30% of the previous workforce who are only paid half of the salary. These hotels are currently operational by observing maximum health protocols. However, in the face of scanty presence of domestic tourists, the operators are facing a hard time to manage their financial constraints as some of these hotels are paying a monthly interest of around 240,000 rupees to banks. This is Bipashna Tamang for a special segment of The Beat and Kantipur News Desk.
that's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.